Hi, I'm John Nunn, and in this video I'm going to talk about one of my older books, A Thousand and One Deadly Checkmates. The title leaves little to the imagination, and as you can probably guess, it's a collection of uh, mating puzzles. Um, none of them especially difficult, starting with fairly elementary ones and becoming perhaps a little bit trickier towards the end of the book. And I'm going to show you the uh, kind of range of positions you can expect if you buy the book. Well, let's start with uh, this position. It's black to play and white is ahead on material, the exchange and the pawn. But uh, the white king is in a slightly awkward position on g5 and most of the white pieces are stuck far away on the queen side. Well, I'll give you a chance to pause the video and uh, think about the position for yourself before we look at the solution. OK, well, I hope you found the answer. If I click on this link, we can see the solution given in the text and the source of the game. The captures and checks thing definitely works here. Black gives a pawn check, a little bit surprising because it involves the sacrifice of his rook. But after white takes the rook, black delivers mate immediately with all three of black's pawns and both of his bishops participating in the mate. In fact, all the black units are essential to the mate apart from the king. So it's a, a nice mate, a bit unexpected. And when you know it's there, it's not too difficult. But it's spotting it, it when you, it arises in a game and you're playing an end game. You think, ah, you know, end games, you don't often get mates. But quite often you do. Uh, and this hat is an end game with quite a few pieces on the board and the white king in the exposed position. So that should be a signal that you might have something unexpected there. OK, let's use the bookmark feature and go on to the second position I've chosen. It's a, perhaps a tiny bit more difficult than the first one. It's a game black to play. Material is equal. Um, there are a lot of pieces on the board. It's a typical middle game position. The first thing you notice is that white is threatening to mate in one with queen takes bishop. Black, of course, can do many things to stop that. For example, he could swap queens, but actually he has something better. So here's your chance to take a look and discover what the solution is. Well, once again, let's click on the link and find the solution. And here it is. Black sacrifices his queen <coughs> is, a, is an interesting position because actually both kings are fairly exposed. As I said, white was certainly mate in one, but it's Black's turn to move and he was able to exploit the vulnerable position of the white king first. The queen sacrifice forces the reply, there's only one legal move, and then the rook on b8, which appeared perhaps a little bit out of play, comes into the attack. And now... White can delay the mate by, for example, putting his queen or rook in the way. But in fact, white moved his king to h2 straight away. That's inevitable sooner or later. And black mates with a typical rook and bishop mate, which often happens with the king on g1. But in this case, it's with the king on h2. But it's the same basic pattern. Rook in the corner, supported by a bishop on the long diagonal. And it's this type of pattern that you need to learn and which this book gives you plenty of practice in finding. These standard patterns occur very often uh, in over the board play and it's part of your basic vocabulary as a chess player to be able to spot these well, at least from a, a short distance away to realise that there's a possibility of a rook in the corner mate. So now we move on to the third position, which has a somewhat higher level of difficulty. So here it is, and this time it's white to play. Oh, materials equal, but it's clear that white's pieces are in more aggressive positions. All his four pieces, the two rooks, the queen and the bishop, are all sort of pointing at the black king side. So you might think, well, there could well be something here. But in fact, there's only one way that wins convincingly. And here's your chance to pause and find out what it is. OK, 
Okay, this was perhaps a little bit more difficult. It was given four points out of um, the scale one to five for difficulty. Because it looks as though there's the possibility, for example, to sacrifice your bishop. But actually that doesn't lead to anything. There's no check on the back rank. Or perhaps you could do the same thing with the rook. Well, OK, of course, it's, it's dangerous. We can see that. But it's not immediately conclusive. And rather surprisingly, the way forward for white is to sacrifice not the bishop or the rook, but the queen. Queen takes rook check. And now it's unavoidable mate. If black takes with the king, white checks. King has to go in the corner and then the rook just goes back along the g-file doesn't matter where it goes to, and it's mate next move after black gives his queen away on b2. The other possibility is that black takes on g8 with his rook. And now the idea of sacrificing the bishop comes into play because the defensive rook on the back rank has been eliminated by the preliminary queen sacrifice. So white sacrifices bishop, there's only one legal reply, and now the rook comes in, it's mate next move, black has to put his rook in the way, and white takes the rook on g8 with either of his rooks and delivers mate. So uh, now it, we're getting into a slightly less common pattern. That's why it's got a higher difficulty rating. The idea of sacrificing on g7 and then doing something on the back rank is a familiar one. You sometimes see a similar kind of pattern with a sacrifice on f7 rather than g7. But here the difficulty was that you had to see that the preliminary queen sacrifice was necessary before the more standard pattern came onto the board. Well, one feature of this book is that all the positions do actually end in mate. In some puzzle books, you see mating combinations where the defender can bail out, for example, by giving up a piece. But I can guarantee that every single one of the 1,001 positions actually has a forced mate, not just a winner material. And I think that's quite a nice feature. So let's go on to the final position, the most difficult. So this is the highest level of difficulty in the book. It's a five-point position. It's white to play again. And white is actually already quite a lot of material down. He's a uh, rook and bishop down for a couple of pawns. And also black has various threats. Uh, the black queen on a2 is in a dangerous position. So white has to do something straight away if he's going to win. Well, as I said, a little bit more difficult this time. So take your time and make sure that you have found the correct solution. So now you can pause the video. OK, let's have a look. First few moves are actually not so difficult to find because if white's going to win, then there's really only one way you can start. But then it becomes a little bit more difficult because there's a finesse that you have to see. White actually has a force mate in 10 here. And I was like, well, that's really hard to see. It's so long. But it's one of those lines where all the black moves are forced and these lines where there's no choice for black sometimes called a box canyon are much easier to calculate than situations in which there's a whole forest of variations uh, emanating from a wide range of uh, black possibilities here it's a, just a straight line from beginning to end and although it's quite long and perhaps a little bit difficult to see from the diagram position it's all totally forced so let's see how it works well, white gives the preliminary check with his queen to bring his queen into an aggressive position. There's no point sacrificing on g7 immediately because there's no follow-up check. So the queen comes to h3. Black has only one legal move. And while now white sacrifices his rook. It's the only reasonable check, so again, not too hard to find. Uh, if the king goes to f8, it's mate in one with queen h8. So black accepts the sacrifice. Now the queen comes in with check. And again, there's only one reasonable check. Now the king can't go to f8 because it's queen f7 mate. So the king has to go to h8. There we go. And, well, at least white has the triumph of taking the rook with check. But it's still not clear why this is any more than perpetual check. 
Black, of course, is now threatening mating one with his queen on a1, so it means that white does have to proceed entirely with checks. But let's see how that works. It doesn't matter whether black moves his king to g7 or h7. White can still play the same move. Queen f7 check, forcing the king to h8. Now that's another queen check, forcing the king to h7. Okay, and this is where white has to do something uh, special. He's got a whole mass of pawns on the king side, and he uses the front g pawn as a sacrifice to draw the black king onto the third rank, which otherwise wouldn't be possible, using only queen checks. Black has to take it, it's his only legal move. And now white gives a further queen check. Black can only play his king to h6, and then white gives mate with his pawn. It's interesting that all four of the pawns on the king's side were necessary for this mate to work. So I don't know whether white saw this continuation well in advance or not, but it's a nice piece of calculation and uh, uh, a great finish to a spectacular combination. Well, books of this type are useful. They're very useful. In fact, it's important, as I say, to know these mating patterns. There's plenty of uh, material for study in this book and um, it's available in print format or in kindle format or in the format which i'm using it to show you here which is using our app gambit chess studio well thanks for listening and watching this video and i hope to see you for my next one